Hello and welcome to another daily devotion as today we talk about the mutuality of faith and doubt. I had uh, gotten the call to go to the uh, family waiting room at the ER. Um, it's my third or fourth month into chaplaincy. And when I got there, there were two parents in hysterics. Their nine-year-old daughter had been riding a horse and had been thrown and hit her head, though she was wearing a helmet, on a rock. And she was in brain surgery as I met them. Um, they said, quoting from Mark's Gospel, we know, Pastor, we're Pentecostals by heart, we know that if we have enough faith, God will save our daughter. God will give the doctors the healing power and our daughter will be fine. So convicted, so animate were they, so powerful in their conviction that as they asked me if I would pray with them, and we all got on our knees there in the waiting room, and we prayed for about an hour on those knees waiting for the doctor. And the more we prayed, the more the parents prayed, the more I felt, yeah, God is going to help this little girl. This is going to be a miraculous story. And the doctors came out and said, she's gone. There's nothing we could do. The brain was swelling up too much. And that intersection of conviction faith just have enough faith and you can say to this mountain get up and be tossed in the sea and whatever you ask for it will be done if you only believe enough I believe Lord help me in my disbelief and when it intersects with a life tragedy something that linearly as we think doesn't go as we prayed it should what now I do not care, God. Did you not hear my prayer? Was this not good for you? Which leads some people in the best meaning, best intentions to say, oh, well, God needed her more than, than you did. Well, hell no. That's my little girl. I mean, God needs her. I have to turn on the lights in heaven? I mean... Isn't that something the omnipotent one can do? You get this kind of Job ask, this isn't fair. Come down here. So we can talk about how it is where I'm living in dirt and mud. Get down from the celestial throne room and tell me why this happened the way it did. And that's where I think faith and doubt walk hand in hand. Moments when our faith is going steady and then suddenly the bottom drops out in something we thought and hoped for and it didn't go the way we wanted. It's what Garth Brooks calls in his song, Unanswered Prayers. Those prayers that we say fervently that we want to go this way, door number A, or room A, and it's just silence, nothing. and All we get is B, which is no answer at all. What do we do with that? when God seems silent, yet we need an answer. When others tell us to be patient or to pray harder, pray more, well, that's not working. You just pray it out. No, you can't. That's not how life always works. Let's be honest. It's like that song, that great old hymn, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. Teach me the struggles of the soul to bear. To check the rising doubt, the rebel sigh. Teach me the patience of unanswered prayer. I'll close with this struggle. It's that great answer, you know, what came first? Can God create a boulder that's bigger than God to move? Well, and that is the notion. Is God all-powerful? Sure. Is God all-knowing? Sure. Is God all good? Yes. Well, if those three things are true, then why does tragedy happen? If God is all good, then why are people starving to death? Why are 
kid killed in a drive-by? Why does my best friend have cancer at 30? It doesn't always fit into the neat little theological boxes that we have, these doctrines that we have all set out on the table. And that's where doubt is really planted as a seed in the soil of faith. You might say faith tells you all the answers of life. I would say my faith is about trusting that God's got me in the unanswerable and in all the tough questions. For which why may be a lifetime of not knowing.